we pray that you will click the share button and then the share now button and start a uh, have your friends and family to watch this video. Our scripture will come from Psalm 150 and it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence, greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have breath in your bodies this morning, you ought to praise the Lord. Now, there are some benefits for praising the Lord. What are the benefits? Well, I am so glad that you asked. Praising God will increase your faith in times like these. As we spend time praising God, we can recount the great things that God has done in our lives, in other people's lives, and even the great things that God has done in the Bible. So when we do this, our souls are reminded of God's goodness, and this builds our faith. Praise is used to express happiness or relief of something did or did that did not happen. And do you have a praise report this morning? Well, let me tell you something. I have a praise report this morning. God woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He brought us out here to the house of worship. He didn't allow anything to happen to us, no accidents or anything like that. So we praise and thank God for just having us on this earth another day. We praise him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is so worthy to be praised because God is our rock. He is our salvation. He's a strong deliverer. So we give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Help us praise God on this morning. Let's praise him, saints.
praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Bless his Savior. He is worthy. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. We thank you for the another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you, Lord, and we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for just keeping us. And yes, Lord, you've given us another chance. You've given us another opportunity. Lord, you've given us another privilege just to call on you. And Lord, it's a privilege to call on your name. Lord, it's a privilege to call on you because you're the only worthy God. And we thank you, Father God, for blessing us. Now, Lord, we ask you to rescue us from ourselves. Bless us, Father God, that we will totally rely on you, that we will be about your business. And Lord, that we will be better when we leave here than we were when we got here. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for missing the mark. Forgive us for messing up. Lord, forgive us, Father God, for neglect. Lord, we know, Father God, that you are blessing us and you are keeping us. Now, Lord, we come before you, Father God, realizing that we come to worship you and worship you alone. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to set us free for worship. We ask you, Father God, to bless us, to honor you with our praise. And now, Lord, we ask you to honor yourself with the preaching. Bless your word to go forth, Father God, that old habits will be rolled away. All burdens will be thrown away. Lord, that we will continue to honor you in all that we do. And we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Jesus, the blessed Savior. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He's my rock in, in my salvation. Strong, strong deliverer. Strong deliverer. In him do I trust. Give him. Give him glory. Give him glory in all things. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy. He is worthy. He is. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The God we serve is worthy. He is the worthy God. He is the Lamb of God. And we say hallelujah to the Lamb today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me call your attention to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. We'll be reading for you verses 11 through 14. And then verse number 17. 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 11 through 14. And rather verse number 18. 1 Kings, in the Old Testament, the book is 1 Kings, the chapter is 19, the verses are 11 through 14, and verse number 18. Hallelujah. If you would, hit the share button and, and then hit share now and invite all your family and friends to join you for service this morning. We have some here in the sanctuary, and those of you who are not here, we welcome you to come. There's plenty good room in the house. There's plenty, there's plenty good room. If you would hit the share button, then hit the share now button for us and, and God will be able to bless people all over this world just because of you. This is your form of evangelism today. First Kings chapter 19, verse number 11 through 14 and verse number 18 is where we are. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind 
tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Certainly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel has forsaken the covenant, forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Verse number 18, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all who knees have not bowed to Baal. And every mouth that has not kissed him. I want to talk about this morning the need to hear from the Lord. The need to hear God's voice. We need to hear from the Lord. We have a need to hear God's voice. When we look at the world in which we are entangled in today, we realize that we need to hear God's voice. It seems sometimes that God is silent. It, it seems sometimes that God is not speaking. We need to hear God's voice. When we look at the world in which we live, we have things going on that most of us have never heard of before. No, that's right. Women taking the lives of their own children. Yes, Men and women, boyfriends and girlfriends, uniting together to kill their own babies. Mm. Children are missing every now and then. More often than not, we get an amber alert saying that somebody has again taken the life of a child or somebody has kidnapped another child. Divorce rates are skyrocketing, even in the local church. We need to hear God's voice. Death is on an all-time high. Many of it is because of the pandemic, but many of it also is because men have chosen to kill each other rather than allow God to call people on home with him. Diseases are running rampant, and every day we look up, there's another variant of COVID-19. Yeah. Lord, I tell you, we need to hear your voice. People of God, we need to hear God's voice. We need God to speak in a way like never before. We we need to spend our time alone with God, talking to God, and being a part of worship with God. Yet, we need to spend our quiet time alone with God, just like Mary spent her time alone with Jesus. We need to spend our time working for the Lord, just like Martha spent her time serving the Lord. Yes, it's time. It's time now for us to go about the Lord's business, to do what God has called us to do. We need to hear God's voice. Let me tell you, if we don't, if we don't hear God's voice, we will have no direction. If we don't hear God's voice, we will have no means of protection. If we don't hear God's voice, we will have no healer that can heal us from what all we are going through. I tell you, we need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to hear God's voice. We need to hear God's voice right now. When we look at the text, we find Elijah in chapter 17 of 1 Kings. Elijah, 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 and I stress Elijah because later on we will hear from Elisha. 
Elijah, Elijah, one of God's prophets. Matter of fact, he represents all prophets. Elijah goes to King Ahab, the ruler, the king of Israel, and he says to him, there will be no rain and there will be no dew for many days until I say so. It is the voice of the preacher, the preacher speaking for God, and he says to king, he says to the king that there will be no rain, there will be no dew until the Lord said so, and the Lord has optioned me to be the one to tell you. It sounds like he's arrogant, but he speaks for the Lord. He says, look, Ahab, because you are king, you have you have failed God and you have led the people of God far away from God. Now, let me tell you, there will be a drought here and there will be famine here because there will be no dew and there will be no rain until I say so. For some three and a half years, there was no dew and no rain. I want to tell you, you can always tell when the voice of the prophet is speaking because when the voice of the prophet speaks, uh, that which he has spoken will always come true. It won't come true sometime. It will come true every single time because the prophet that is called to be a prophet does not speak unless the spirit of God unction him to. There were many, there were many modern day prophets who prophesied that 50 minus 5 would be the next president of the United States. And now one of them has laid down his prophet mantle and decided he's not going to prophesy anymore because the Donald Trump is no longer the president. Let me just share with you today that there is no need for, for prophecy as we see it in the text anymore. For Jesus has already come and God is now speaking by his son, Jesus the Christ. So the prophet, the prophet Elijah says, there will be no rain. Now he says it will be no rain, and we can understand if there's no rain, but he not only says there will be no rain, he also says there will be no dew. In other words, there will be no moisture. And because there was no moisture, because there was no rain, because there was no dew, a famine hit the land. Let me tell you, it's not enough to water your crops with the water that comes out of your hydrant, you have to you have to every now and then depend on God bringing pure rain because there is nothing like the rain that falls from the sky that God produces. You, you don't need any chemicals, you don't need any chlorine, you don't need any alum, you don't, you don't need any flocculation, no, no sedimentation. When God turns the rain to loose, God has put purities and he's also put minerals in the rain that your flowers can grow, that your animals can drink. And that your plants will be added to on a regular basis. So the prophet of God says it will be no rain and no dew until I say so. And lo and behold, there was no rain and no dew until the prophet said so. So because there was no rain, there was a famine going on. Because there was no rain, there was no water for the livestock. I want to thank Brother Whitlock for doing an excellent job of presenting this morning because the fact of the matter is he was leading us right to chapter 19 as he covered chapter 18. When you look at chapter 17, there was a dew not falling. There was a rain not falling. And there was a drought going on. There was a famine going on. When you look at chapter 17, God pulls Elijah aside and says to him, go and sit by the brook called Shari. And while you're there, the rain is going to feed you. I want to tell you today that God has a way of blessing you even when others ain't getting blessed. <laughs> God has a way of providing for you right in the midst of a drought. God will provide for you right in the midst of a famine. Others may be starving, but God has a way of providing, providing for you. And the ravens came and the ravens fed him. Uh, and they were right on time every day. They, they, they gave him something to eat and he drank from the brook. And one day the brook dried up. I stop to tell you today that sooner or later, what you're getting that, what, that is successful right now, those things that are causing you to be successful right now, one of these days is going to dry up. 
Somebody's friendship has dried up. Some, somebody's family has, walked out, has walked out on them. Somebody's friends have left them for the friendless. And because they have left them, let me tell you, your brook has dried up. Now, it, it, it says in the text, it says in the text, when the brook dried up, Elijah had to move. Somebody is sitting beside a dried up brook and they still trying to force it. Somebody is sitting beside a dried up brook. The ravens have stopped coming and you still depending on the ravens. Let me tell you, God knows how to get you to move. God knows how to get you to advance because the brook will dry up and the raven will stop coming. Let me tell you, young man, young man, you you not you need to stop sitting at home waiting on a job. The brook has dried up, brother. Yeah. Some people are depending on the stimulus package. Yeah. Let me tell you, sooner or later, the stimulus package is going to stop coming. Yeah. Some people, young folk who are healthy, who are built well, who are who are going through life, and they think that somebody owes them something, and that somebody is going to give them something. Let me just share with you, sooner or later, the brook is going to dry up. If you're depending on your mom and your daddy, if you're depending on them to make it, make it happen for you, sooner or later, the brook is going to dry up. And when the brook dries up, when the ravens stop coming, let me just share with you, it's time for you to move on. Some relationships are suffering right now, and the relationship is gone. The brook has dried up. The, the, the ravens have stopped coming, and you still are trying to make it happen. Let me tell you, the brook has dried up. It's time to move on. After the brook dried up, after the ravens stopped coming, Elijah moves, and he passes by the household of this woman in Zarephath. And this woman, because of the drought, because there's no income, and because there's a famine, this woman has come to the conclusion in 1 Kings chapter 17 that I'm going to make a whole cake of bread. My son and I are going to eat the whole cake of bread, and we're going to lay down and die. Yeah. Elijah, the preacher, shows up, and he said, don't, don't, don't depend on it that way. Matter of fact, while you're at it, go ahead and make the preacher some first. He says, he says, I know it's a drought. I, I, I know it's a famine. I know you come to the conclusion that you and your son are going to eat and they're going to let you going to lay down and die. But while you're at it, bring me something to eat. The woman replies to him and say, look, look, I, I don't have enough food for you, preacher. I, I just got enough food for my son and myself. And I'm going to lay down and die. My son is going to lay down and die. But he, the preacher says, Elijah says to her, when you, when you make a whole cake and bread, when you make some, give me some oil, it will not run out. And you know the story. As long as the woman scooped out, it kept filling up. The oil kept increasing. The food, let me just tell you, in the midst of a famine, God will keep you when you don't know how to keep yourself. When you have given up, God knows how to keep you. This woman, this woman gave Elijah, food gave him all, and every time she dipped, in, dipped into it, it, it began to bless. God knew how to bless us. God knows how to bless us even when, when checks ain't coming. God knows how to bless us when unemployment has not gotten there. God knows how to bless us when we can't make money on our own. God just keeps right on blessing us if we just obey the voice of God. Elijah there and, and this woman have fed him so she feels like Elijah owes her something. Her boy gets sick. He dies. She says, now look, I fed you and now my son is dead. The Bible says Elijah stretches out over this boy, calls on the Lord and when he calls on the Lord, he calls on the Lord in such a way until the boy lives again. The man of God ought to be able to call on God and God ought to hear him. Yeah, God heard him. God heard him and revived the boy one more time. When we move to chapter 18, we find Elijah there with King Ahab. And, and Elijah approaches King Ahab. He gets a meeting with King Ahab. And Elijah calls a contest on Mount Carmel. 
Yeah, this is one of my favorite here when he calls a contest on Mount Carmel. In chapter 18, he, he goes up to Mount Carmel, right around verse number 20. He goes to Mount Carmel and he says to them, y'all go first. And he says to them, the God that answers by fire is the only true and the living God. He says, you all who, 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 worship, who worship Baal, those of you who honor Baal, go ahead and call on your God. You know, Baal was the fertility god. Baal was one of the, the, the many gods that they had. They worshiped Baal. Let me just stop and tell you now, Ahab was the king of Israel, but he had a wife named Jezebel. He had a wife named Jezebel. Let me just tell you, it, it's pretty dangerous to have a wife named Jezebel. He had a wife named Jezebel. She was strong-hearted. She was strong-handed. She was a strong-hearted woman. And this woman called Jezebel was really running Ahab. She was, she was running Ahab. She was running Ahab. Matter of fact, she was running the country. Let me tell you, everybody who's in position are not always running that position. Ahab was in position, but, but Jezebel was running the position. And so, so she had killed the prophets of God. And now she has 850 prophets, prophets from the grove and prophets from Baal, a total of 850 prophets. Elijah calls a meeting on Mount Carmel, and when he calls the meeting on Mount Carmel, he said, y'all go ahead and call on Baal. And the Bible says they call Baal, and when they called on Baal, they called him from morning to noonday. And Baal didn't answer. Elijah got kind of cocky and said, you know that he is a God, you know. Why don't you call him a little louder because he may be on his journey. Matter of fact, why don't you call him a little louder because he may be relieving himself. He was making fun of their God because he knew that there's only one true and living God, Jehovah God himself. Amen. The Bible says they began to cut themselves up when when Baal didn't answer, they began to, to scar themselves with, with stone. They began to, to cut themselves into blood, just gushed out as a sacrifice to Baal. And even though they were sacrificing themselves to Baal, Baal still didn't answer. Yeah. Elijah begins to take the altar and he says, I tell you what you do. I, I want you to go ahead and bring the bullock and put it on the altar and, 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 and put water on it. Then put some more water on it. Then put some more water on it. And then I want you to put water all around the altar. And when you pour water all around the altar, dig a trench around the altar and pour water in the trench. And the Bible says that God, that Elijah called on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when he called on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he began to hear the voice of God through the, through the fire that came down. The Bible says that when he called on God, immediately the, the fire came down from heaven. It burned up the altar. It burned up the bullet and it licked the water right out of the trenches. Yeah, he is God. He is God. He's the only true and the only living God. Elijah began to do just like God says when you go, it's called the, the scorch earth, earth policy where you burn up everything and you kill off everything. So Elijah killed off the prophets of Baal. When we get to verse number 19, chapter number 19, we find Elijah after he had killed off the prophets of Baal. The Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 19, 1 King, that Ahab told Jezebel. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when the king has to go and tell his wife. Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. Today's Sunday school lesson calls Elijah the prophet of courage. But in chapter number 19, he's the prophet of cowardness. <laughs> Because when Jezebel got on his trail, Jezebel made a promise to Elijah. And she said, Elijah, just as sure as I'm living, just as sure as tomorrow come, right around this time tomorrow, I'm going to have you killed off. You will be dead. So Elijah is on the run. It's a sad day when the preacher is on the run. It's a bad day when, when the preacher is running, when he's done just what God had told him to do. He's on the run. He is on the run. So Elijah runs. He drops his servant off. Uh, he drops off his servant and he keeps on running. He runs and he, he sits on a, a juba tree. 
It's called a juniper tree in King James. It calls a tree of a broom in New King James. He runs, he finds himself under a tree. And he begins to pray, Lord, go on, kill me off. He said, Lord, kill me off. He said, I'm done. He said, Lord, I quit. It's a bad day when the preacher decides to quit. It's a sad day when the preacher gets so scared and so depressed that he got to quit. That's why you ought to encourage your preacher. Because you never know what the preacher is going through. You ought to encourage your preacher because sooner or later, the preacher is going to have a bad day. Sooner or later, the preacher will be on the run. The preacher was on the run. He sits under this tree. And while he's sitting under the tree, he falls asleep. He tells God, God, don't kill me. He says, not only do I want you to kill me because I'm done, go ahead and kill me because I'm just like my ancestors. They already did, so kill me off also. He says, I want to I wanna die. Have you ever been to that point when things just weren't going right for you? Have you ever been to that point where you just gave up? I want to say to you today, hold, hold your hold. Don't, don't give up. I want to say to you today, wait just a little, little while longer. Watch, watch when God comes through. When God comes through, he can bless you. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Hold on. God is on the way. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. God is going to bless you. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. God is going to keep you. And whatever you've been praying for, hang in there and watch what God does. Yes, yes, keep yes, praying. Yes. Keep listening. He says, I've had enough. <laughs> Elijah says that. He says, now look, God, I've done all that you can, you can ask me to do. He gets to verse number four of 1 Kings chapter, chapter 19. He, he gets verse number four and says, look, I'm done with this. He says, I have had enough. He says, I quit. He says, "Go! I am no better than my fathers and my ancestors. Go ahead and take me out of here. The good thing about Elijah is that he didn't try to take his own life. He, he still trusted God enough. And he said, God, go ahead and kill me. He trusted God enough to take his life. Let me tell you, you don't have to take your life. God knows how to raise one up. And God knows how to shut one down. God knows how to bring a man up from the ground, and God knows how to lay a man down to die. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to take your own life. Trust God. Trust God. Be, 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 be not dismayed. Trust God. So he falls asleep, and he wakes up. There's an angel there. And the angel says to him, arise, get up and eat. He says, go on, eat. He said, go ahead. Go ahead and eat. And he finds a cake bait and water in a jug right there where he's laying. I want to tell you, by the time you're getting ready to give up, God can bless you. By the time you get hungry, by the time you get sleepy, by the time you're going through life like you've never gone through before, God will prepare a meal and a drink right there for you. The Bible says he prepared a meal and a drink for him, and it was right there. And let me just say this to you. Sometimes you're looking for something, and God already has it there for you. God knows what you need. God knows what you want. And God knows how to present it to you. He wakes up. He eats. He drinks. And he falls back to sleep. He lays back down. The angel unctions him again. Arise, get up, eat, because you got a far journey. Arise, get up, and eat, because the journey is too great for you to, to be going without nourishment. And that food and that drink was enough for him to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Hebron, Mount Horam, which is also known as Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. So he traveled 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horam, Horam and he, he traveled to the same place, Mount Sinai, where Moses was. There, God sees him, observes him running in a cave. He goes into a cave. He spends a night there. And behold, the word of the Lord comes to him again. Elijah, what are you doing here? 
Let me just tell you, let me tell you now, let me tell you, God knows where you are. And God knows where you ought to be. And whenever you go somewhere and spend time somewhere where you ought not be, and when you ought not be doing that, God will call you out. Look at God. God calls him out. Elijah, what are you doing here? All of us have been some places we didn't supposed to be. All of us have been some places in our lives we didn't supposed to be. All of us are doing some things every now and then where we don't need to be. God calls him out. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send Jesus. God asked the question, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then Elijah says, now look, God, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. Here Elijah coming to himself again, talking about, I've been there, Lord. I, 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 I have, and we don't have to recall to God what we've done for God. He says, I've been excited about the worship. I, I've been excited about being a part of, uh, of God thing. I've been excited about giving you honor and giving you praise. I've been worshiping and, and I've been serving you, Lord. I have been very zealous, excited, enthusiastic, and I've been there for you, Lord. Wow. While these Israelites have forsaken your covenant, these Israelites, have forsaken your covenant, Lord. They have torn down your altar. They don't worship you at the altar anymore. They have torn down your altar. And they have killed your prophets with the sword. You see, it's easy for us to put ourselves up here and put the rest of the congregation down here. I want to say to you today that we all have stuff wrong with us. We all have fallen short. We, we all have messed up. We all are messing up on a daily basis. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. It's a good thing you've been zealous for God. Yeah. Keep right on being zealous. And see, it's easy for us to point out somebody else's fault. Look what Elijah said. Elijah said, I am the one. I've been there for you, Lord. I've been zealous for the Lord God of hosts. It's those Israelites who have forsaken your covenant. It's those Israelites who have torn down your altar. It's those Israelites who have killed your prophets with the sword. And then he comes back and says, I, I alone am left. I, I alone is left. And they seek to take my life. Let me just share with you. God is not even interested in the preacher throwing the pity party. And let me tell you something else. God is not interested in the non-preachers throwing the pity party. God is not interested in his people throwing a pity party. Here he is saying, I alone, Lord, I am the only one left. I am the only one left who's right. I heard a preacher say one day, uh, asked the question one day when he was he was taunting another preacher's faults. He asked the question, am I the only one trying to live right? Mm. My reply was, no, you ain't the only one trying to live right because you ain't living right. Just the mere fact that you asked that question was a pious question. Just the mere fact that you would even suggest that you're the only one living right. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. We cannot point out others' faults to make ourselves look good. Right. We have to make sure that we understand that it is the God we serve that keeps us holy. It is the God we serve that separates us from the rest. It is the God we serve that blesses us and keeps us. Right. Elijah runs into the cave. And when he runs into the cave, he needs to hear God's voice. It's lonely when you're doing it God's way. It's tough when you're doing it God's way. So the man of God, he runs into a cave. He's in the cave and we're at verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, then he, he, God says, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. 
I said, the Lord passed by. Isn't it a good thing when the Lord passed by? But the thing about the Lord passing by, we don't want to pass him to pass by. We want the Lord to bless us in his passing by. The old, the old Negro hymn used to say, do not pass us by. We don't want the Lord to pass us by. We want the Lord to bless us, and we want the Lord to keep us, and we want the Lord to stop by here. That's what, that's what we sing, come by here, my Lord. Stop by here, my Lord. Stop by here, Lord, stop by here. Every church in America, every church in the world need to be praying right now, Lord, stop by here. We're in a tough situation right now. We need the Lord to stop by here. Yeah. The Lord passed by. And when the Lord passed by, there was a great wind, a great strong wind. Listen, listen, the preacher is waiting to hear from the voice of the Lord. And you ought to wait to hear from the voice of the Lord. You ought to want to hear from God's voice because when he speaks, things happen. When he speaks, blessings take place. You need to hear the voice of the Lord. Yes. The Bible says the Lord passed by when the Lord passes by. When the Lord passed by, we want the Lord to speak to us. Yes. We want the Lord to redeem us. Yes. We want the Lord to bless us. And we want him to bless us right now. How many of you in the house today? want the Lord to bless you? How many of you want the Lord to be a blessing to you? How many of you want the Lord to do some great things in your life? You want the Lord to do something that you can't do on your own. I want God to bless us and keep us. The Lord is passing by. Let me tell you, when you're in a hot service and you're, you're in, the, in, in a service with the Lord and the Lord is present, don't let him pass by, by without you grabbing, grabbing the hold to him. Don't let him pass by without you humbling yourself before him. Don't let God just pass by and you become the same way you were before you got here. Don't let him pass you by. The songwriter said, Lord, don't, don't pass us by. The text declares a great strong wind blew and the wind was so powerful until it broke the rocks in pieces and he did it before the Lord. Let me tell you, whenever God's on the scene, he, he can do some things that can amaze us. The Bible says that when God showed up, when God passed by, there was a great wind, a strong wind that took place. There was a windstorm that took place. And because there was a windstorm that took place, many of us would think that God was in the strong wind. The Bible says God wasn't in the wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's God that, that passes by, but the wind is taking place. The wind is strong. The wind is powerful. But the fact of the matter is God is not in the wind. I, I want to tell you today that God is not in every violent act. <laughs> God doesn't always reveal himself in a loud, boisterous way. Sometimes God doesn't reveal himself in the strong and mighty wind. Sometimes people will say, oh, that hurricane, God is speaking. The, the text says that God wasn't speaking in the wind. Then he says, after the wind passed by, after the wind had broken up the, the mountain into pieces, after the wind took place, then an earthquake took place. The earthquake took place. The earth began to shake. The, the, work, the earth began to crack. The earth began to, to, vi uh, to vibrate. But God wasn't in the earthquake. Yeah. Some people have come to the conclusion that when things get all torn up, God did it. The Bible says God wasn't in the earthquake. The Bible says it wasn't in the earthquake. His voice wasn't speaking in the earthquake. We want God to speak to us. You see, the devil knows how to present falsehood to us. The devil knows how to, how to, how to act like he's blessing us, and then he'll snatch it back. It says God wasn't in the earthquake. So a strong wind came. God wasn't in the wind. The earthquake showed up. God wasn't in the earthquake. And then a fire took place. Uh, certainly now God would be speaking in the fire because when we, we talk about really having some church, we talk about getting on fire with the Lord and, and the Lord speaking to the fire. And then the Bible says that a fire showed up and then we talk about the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire showed up and God wasn't even in the fire. 
Isn't that amazing? That's, that's pretty amazing. Sometimes we get excited because fire is going on, but the text declares that God was not in the fire. God wasn't in the fire. So a strong wind come, a powerful wind come, but God is not in the wind. A, a earthquake takes place, rearranges everything, but God is not in the earthquake. A fire comes, and surely, surely some saints would say, through the fire of the Holy Ghost, God shows up and he speaks. But the text declares that God wasn't in the fire. God wasn't in the fire. And then the text says to us today that in verse number 12, after the earthquake, there was a fire, but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. God comes sometimes in a nonviolent way. God comes sometimes in a still, small voice. God doesn't always come in in a loud, boisterous way. God showed up in a still, small voice. I want to ask you this morning, how many of you have missed God because you want him to do something great? Yeah. You want him to do something powerful. You want him to do something big. But God doesn't always speak in big things. He came in a small, yeah. still yeah. voice. Yeah. So next time you want to hear from yeah. God, next time you want to hear God's voice, yeah. God speak to me. And don't be surprised if he speaks through a still, small voice. And the next thing declares that, that, that Elijah went out. He heard it. He heard it. Now, when you hear the voice of the Lord, heart not in your heart. When you hear the voice of the Lord, don't, don't, don't wait around. He says, the text says that when he heard the voice of the Lord, he wrapped his face in his mantle, his cloak. He, he wrapped his face in his cloak. He, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly the voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Look at what it says. Whenever you hear the voice of God, God calls us to react. When God shows up in a powerful way, sometimes he shows up in a still, small voice. Regardless of how he shows up, regardless of what he speaks, you need to obey God. Let me just share with you. When the voice of God shows up and you know it's the voice of God, you ought to humble yourself. The text says he humbled himself. He covered his face. He humbled himself. He covered his face. And the next thing I want to say to you today, whenever you hear the voice of the Lord, you got to do something. <laughs> you got to change your position. Look what he does. He changes his position. What would America be like if Democrats would change their position? What would America be like if Republicans and Independents would change their position? Whenever you listen and you hear and you adhere to the voice of the Lord, you got to change your position. The text declares his position changed. His mind changed. His heart changed. And his physical location changed. He, he walked out to the entrance of the cave. Let me tell you, sometimes you got to leave behind things that's been holding you back. You see, the cave been separating him from God. The cave has been, has been securing him from the elements of Jezebel. But sometimes you got to walk out on faith and watch what God does. He walks to the entrance of the cave. He's heard from God. He's hearkening unto God. He walks out to the entrance of the cave and hear this question comes from heaven again. Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah, you're not fit. God has been asking somebody this morning, what are you doing where you are? Why are you where you are? Somebody been waiting to go, to, go, to, go back to school and they've been hesitating. God is still asking the question, why are you still here? What are you doing here? God is still asking the question over and over and over again. Why are you here? What are you doing here? Why are you still going through this thing? God wants you to move out of that position. Right. Here Elijah comes again with his pity party. Verse number 14. Verse number 14, he says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. 
Because guess what, Lord? As if God didn't already know. Guess what, Lord? Them, they're Israelites. Those Israelites have forsaken your covenant. Those Israelites have torn down your altar. Those Israelites have killed off your prophets, God, with the sword. It's those Israelites. Let me just share with you today. Stop blaming other people for where your position is right now. Don't blame other people for being where you are. Don't blame other people for, for the position you're in. Don't blame other people for the circumstances around you. You got to own up to it. And when you own up to it, trust God. Call out to him. And here he goes again. I alone am left. And I alone have been seeking you. And now, Lord, they seeking to take my life. If somebody's seeking to take your life, you better call on God. <laughs> if somebody's looking, looking out to, to get you, you better call on God. If somebody is seeking to, to get next to you, you better call on God. We got to give Elijah credit. Every time Elijah got into a coward situation, he called on God. He ran and he called on God. He said, now I, I alone have been zealous for you. I and I alone been excited about the ministry. I and I alone have not bowed before Baal. So in verse number 18, God had to set him straight. Verse number 18, he says, Yet I have received over 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal. I have received over 7,000 who have not yet kissed Baal. You see, because it was a usual thing going on where you would walk up and kiss your God. You see, they served idol gods. And because they served idol gods, what they would do is walk up and kiss their God. It reminds me today of a statue that's been built. They say it was built in Mexico of 50 minus 5, and, and people are bowed down to it, and people are kissing it. Let me tell you, you don't want a God that you can bow down to and walk up and kiss. You notice in the text, the text declares that God passed by. When you look at Moses, the text declares God passed by. You don't have a God that's such a common God until he can be put on the same level as ordinary men. He's God all by himself. God says to Elijah, Elijah, I don't want to hear your pity party. I have over 7,000 still in Israel that has not bowed to Baal, and they have not kissed Baal. Let me just finish this note by saying to you today, God knows everything and everybody. And we never know who God is using and what God is doing. I said God knows everything and everybody. And we never know who God is using and what God is doing. Let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, God took Jesus, his only begotten son. Man didn't know what they were doing. And man didn't know what Jesus was doing. And man didn't know what God was doing. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his son as a ransom for you and me. So that men would hear God's voice for 400 years. They didn't hear God's voice. Malachi spoke the last word in the Old Testament. Malachi declared that every child should seek their father and every father should seek their child. And then there was a hush from God. Nothing coming in and out of heaven for 400 years. And then when God brings, brings his voice back to mankind in Matthew chapter 1, he says that Jesus came down through 42 generations. We need to hear the voice of God. And as we hear the voice of God, we understand that Jesus came down through 42 generations. He gave his life for mankind. He died on a stud hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. Yes, they did. He died on a stud hill called Calvary. He voluntarily gave his life. They took him off the cross, laid him in a bar tomb. Out of that third day morning, he rose from the dead. We didn't know what God was doing. We didn't know what God is up to, but now we know. We know that God was making a way out of no way for all mankind. If you're listening to me today and you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can trust him today. You can believe him. I'm telling you, you need to hear the voice of God. You need to hear God's voice. You need to hear the voice of the Lord. You need to hear his voice. 
and you need to hear his voice right well. You thought that God's voice was coming through him. You thought God's voice was coming through it. You thought God's voice was coming through her. You thought God's voice was coming through them. But the text says that God came. His voice came through a still, small voice. The voice of Jesus. The door is open. If you can believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, God spoke through Jesus the Christ, gave his life as a ransom for you and me. If you are here today and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, just repeat after me these simple words and invite Jesus into your life. Will you pray with me and ask Jesus to come and be a part of your life? You bow your head now and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again. When you die, you're on your way to heaven. There may be others of you who have received Jesus Christ already saved, but for some reason or the other, you've not been doing it God's way. You've walked away from the voice of God. You've hidden in a cave. You have not changed your position since you've been saved. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless these who will recommit, redirect, rededicate their lives to you. Bless them, Father God, that they will walk with you and that you will be their Lord and you will be their God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Who have, there may be others who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Jesus is the center of attention. And Jesus is the main attraction. If you've received Jesus as your savior, please inbox me and let me know. If you have rededicated your life, please inbox me and let me know. And if you want to join the New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know. We'll be glad to, to rejoice with you and celebrate with you as a new member of the New Beginning Church. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. We thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sheermont Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give uh, here in the sanctuary. We'll be giving right now. And if you're in the sanctuary, please stand and come and bring forth your offering. And those of you who are online, you can give by way of, uh, of, first of all, you can give by way of Zelle. We prefer that you give by way of Zelle or by P.O. Box. Zelle, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by way of P.O. Box. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. And those of you who are in the process of making the transition as we have requested, from Cash App to Zelle, and you have not made that transition yet, you can still give by way of Cash App. Our Cash App account is dollar sign NBC Souls, cash tag NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls. Thank you so much for giving. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God.
let me thank those of you who have been faithful in your gifts even during this pandemic even while we have not been meeting uh, we are back open the church is open you can come and be a part of our services we have socially distancing chairs socially distanced chairs or spiritual distance chairs we have chairs set apart we have family members that will sit together you will be required to give your name your phone number for tracking as you walk in the door and you will have your temperature taken as you walk in the door so please come and fellowship with us uh, the church is here for for worship amen we have few people in the room so come and be a part of our service and you can also continue to watch us at 10:45 here on facebook live also we begin church service here at the new beginning church when you come into the church at 10 30. next sunday is resurrection sunday we will have our parking lot service we're praying for good weather for for resurrection sunday we're praying or ask you to pray with us we'll have our parking lot service at 10 30 a.m those who are helping please ma'am please sir go ahead and be here early um, so we can go ahead and have everything set up by 10 o'clock on next Sunday. We will start our parking lot service at 10.30 a.m. next Sunday. Amen. We're looking forward to, to moving from phase one to phase two. We're now into phase two where people are actually coming in the church. And uh, second Sunday in April, we will look to make sure that you feel comfortable to be a part. We have hand sanitizer, temperatures taken, and we are also doing tracing or tracking. Amen. Again, thank you for being a part of our service. To those of you who are in the audience, thank you for attending. Those of who, who have tuned in, thank you for tuning in. We're looking forward to God doing great things in your life. Amen. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let us stand and let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you that we can hear your voice. Lord, we ask you to speak to us. Bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business, that we will walk with you, and that we will be blessed by you. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us that we will always lift you up, whether we're here or there. Bless us, Father God, that we will not tear down your altars. Bless us, Lord, that we will not kill off the prophets or the preachers or the teachers. Bless us, Lord, that we will always keep your covenant, that we will agree with you that we are wrong and you are right. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we go. Bless us to continue to walk with you and tell others about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Speak to us, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, in dominion. And the church said, amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you and be blessed.